Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to install the latest Mac OS X El Capitan on VMware Workstation 12 or later on Windows. In my opinion, this is the best way to do it because you are using your own operating system that you downloaded straight from Apple so you know that there's not going to be any malicious software inside the operating system if you were to download it um, from somebody online. So this is definitely going to be best for people that have older Macs um, or people that want to use the Mac operating system on a high resolution display or people that uh, simply want more power. I know in my case I did this because my Mac cannot hook up to my 4K monitor and display a 4K resolution so this solved my problem with that and it is very important with uh, app development. So you're going to need a relatively powerful PC running VMware. Um, you're, it's going to need Windows 7 or uh, later along with at least 4 gigabytes of RAM but uh, you should definitely have more than that subsequent hard drive space uh, obviously VMware Workstation and you are going to have to install a very small program that modifies a few files inside VMware to uh, allow us to easily install um, this Mac operating system inside VMware um, and then obviously you also need the uh, El Capitan download from the Mac App Store on your Mac um, which is free even if you already have El Capitan so and this last one um, I actually didn't do this I I threw the files from the Mac onto a, a network storage drive and then transferred it over but if you do want to use um, hardware to transfer those files it's going to need to be formatted in EXFAT because uh, for both the operating systems to be able to read it. Alright so now that we've switched over to the Mac um, as you can see here I'm running 10.11.5 uh, on an early 2011 MacBook Pro so it's relatively old. So what you're going to want to do is uh, go head over to the App Store and uh, find the operating system if you don't already have it uh, downloaded not installed that doesn't matter um, but it needs to be downloaded on the machine whether it's installed or not so go over here click on download and I actually just downloaded it so when that's done downloading it's going to be in your applications folder or right here um, in your launch pad as you can see there but uh, that isn't important where it is because uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be uh, downloading this very small file that I will have in the description along with um, the other file for VMware Workstation which I'll be including also it's a very small file it, what it does is it runs a script and what the script does is it just converts um, this package right here into a simple ISO file and puts it right on your desktop right here. So this is the file you will get and it should be uh, exactly 7.67 uh, gigabytes so if it's not you might want to run it again. Um, and so you will need to transfer this to the Windows machine somehow whether that's through a network drive or an uh, EXFAT formatted drive so um, I will start that process up so now that we are back on the Windows side after you have downloaded our unlocker zip file from the description you're going to want to open it up unzip the file and then come into the folder and this win-install.command file uh, you're going to want to make sure to close VMware Workstation out so close that and then run this as administrator and what this does is it uh, inst it runs a few prerequisite lines and then it runs unlocker.exe and it enables VMware to install uh, Mac OS 10 here so after that's done, um, make sure you have your El Capitan ISO on the machine from your Mac operating system. And a few simple steps, obviously go to Workstation New VM, 
typical and here you can select uh, exactly where you put the ISO file in my case uh, right here so we click that from the Mac OS and then as you can see we have a new option called Mac Apple Mac OS 10 um, select the version which we have 10.11 uh, name it and I'm going to be using this as a developer machine so I need a bit more space so we do need to customize the hardware a bit it needs uh, at least four gigabytes of RAM to run properly um, the processors uh, number of processors not many machines have two processors so change that to one um, this needs to be at least two for the cores I'm gonna select four here for more power especially if you have a hyper threaded processor to you can select that um, go to USB controller and uh, just for safety we're gonna put this to 2.0 to make sure things are running smoothly and everything else should be good for that so we finish it we don't want to power it up yet though because there is something in the configuration we need to do so we need to open up the VMX file in a text editor so wherever you selected to install um, that virtual machine in my case right here uh, you're gonna need to go into the folder and open up the VMX file in a text editor I'm using sublime here and all we do is we change the virtual hardware dot version line to 10 instead of 12 and then save the file close that and then now that we change that um, we can power it on alright so now uh, the virtual machine has powered on so we're going to run through the setup um, and there are a few uh, things to take note on so unfortunately we can't just uh, run through absolutely everything like a normal install um, because as you can see here it doesn't see our VMware uh, hard drive uh, all it sees is the base system so it's that's fine so all we need to do is uh, go up to utilities and then uh, disk utility then you'll see our uh, virtual hard drive right here um, which is the size that I said I wanted it to be and you simply go to erase and we'll name it um, Mac OS and this uh, needs to be in um, Mac OS 10 extended journaled format for things to work properly and then uh, this setting is fine to leave it at that so then we just go to erase and it's going to go about formatting our disk so we can install the operating system on it Let's go ahead and click done and then uh, you can quit disk utility and we're back here in the install screen so just go ahead and click Mac OS and push continue so now it's going to be installing the operating system on our virtual hard drive um, so we'll let that go Alright, so that took a bit longer than expected, more than 20 minutes, but the install has completed. Um, I realize that it's also very small. So the install is completed, so select your country, push continue, run through the setup, and then I just uh, want to get straight into the operating system.
So we create our account. Choose your location. And now, as you can see, the install is completed, but we are still not done. Um, we need to eject uh, our virtual disk here so we can install VMware tools to get a high resolution and other features. So go ahead and click on the bottom here, I finished installing. And then um, that should go ahead and input our VMware tools. And if it doesn't, all you have to do is go up to um, VM and then install VM tools. And then just double click on uh, that icon right there and walk through the simple installation and restart the virtual machine alright now that VMware tools is installed um, you should uh, be able to change your resolution of your screen um, but unfortunately on this machine I'm not able to but I will show you if you do have this problem what you need to do alright so in order to fix your screen resolution um, we have to manually uh, type in the command from VMware so um, the command is located at root directory, library, application support, um, and VMware tools. So head into terminal and we need to switch directories uh, to that. So you type in cd space slash library slash application support and I just push tab to autocomplete slash VMware tools make sure that's capital slash uh, actually that's it so now we're in the right directory um, and this is the program we need to run which is the resolution set program right here so I'm gonna type in VMware resolution set dot slash of course to run the program and then uh, the resolution we want um, oh and you have to sudo the line because it is requires super user privileges um, so type in your root password actually there is no X there so the command is just sudo dot slash uh, VMR resolution set and then your width space your height and uh, make sure you're in the right directory so as you can see there now we have a full 1080p canvas here um, right here and it looks great there is one more thing you can do for high resolution displays such as the one I'm using which uh, is going to enable the zoomed in mode such as on their MacBook Pros. Alright, so let's say that you have a 4K monitor such as myself and um, you wanted to run that um, but you don't want everything to be microscopically small uh, as uh, you know without any scaling. So we'll set to the native resolution of 3840 by 2160 which is 4k oh I need to change my directory okay so now I'm gonna zoom out here as you can see uh, things are very very small so for scaling such as on their MacBook 
uh, MacBook Pros and such. Um, you can't, you might not be able to see this command, but um, I will have it in the description. It simply writes um, a default for true in a preference file. So you enable that command and then you simply restart the machine. So now that the machine is done restarting, you go into System Preferences, Displays, and you'll notice a new option here um, for 1920 by 1080. So as you can see, things are much, much bigger and clearer, um, and things are very readable and four times bigger than they would be. And if you want to go back uh, to have more real estate, obviously you just click that. So yeah guys, that is how you install OS 10 El Capitan on Windows VMware. And everything is uh, fully functional. You can uh, have Xcode on here. It's all the latest, updates work, all legitimate. Um, Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for more content.